Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Matt Horn is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. More and more androids show signs of deviancy. There are millions in circulation. If they become unstable, the consequences will be disastrous. My name is Kara. This is where it all began. The world's forge. And it will all end. Hello, Matt Horn. This is Simbi Khalidi calling. Where are you? Are you playing Detroit Become Human? Are you enjoying Amanda? <laughs> Give me a call back. All right. Ciao. On the line, we have Simbi Carly talking to us from where are you talking to us from, Simbi? I am in Baltimore, Maryland, East Coast. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful <laughs> stuff. Obviously, I should point out today is the start of the World Cup. Yes. I'm so inept. I know not what is going on with the World Cup. Fill me in. <laughs> what is the World Cup? <laughs> the funny thing is actually about the World Cup, I should point this out, is the fact that Russia and I think it's Saudi Arabia, the first people playing each other. Mm. And it just seems the weirdest lineup. <laughs> <laughs> A bit odd. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> Obviously, that's where the World Cup is this this year. It's in Russia. That's a bit weird as well, but we won't go into that. We'll yeah, keep it light. <laughs> yeah, keep it light. Keep it anti-Trump. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, we've got you here to talk about Detroit Become Human. Yes. Which has recently been released. Yes, May twenty fifth, it debuted on Sony PlayStation. People are liking it. I've gotten um, a lot of good feedback from it. People hate me, of course, which is fun, which is fair. I'm pretty evil, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what was production of the game like for you? I'll start with the audition. I was so excited that I flubbed my lines like six times. It was terrible. It was awful. I had to sit down. The casting person was like, okay. Simbi, I know you can do this. Just sit down and look at the material. So I calmed myself. I, I think I just wanted the job so badly. I was so excited. I had never done motion capture before. And so I grounded myself. I got quiet. I dropped into that actor zone, dropped everything else away, and then I knocked it out like three times. And then I didn't hear anything. So I was like, oh, well, perhaps I didn't get it. And then about four months later, I got a call saying they want to know your dates. Are you available at Thanksgiving? I was like, heck yeah, I am. And then um, I didn't actually end up working on it till about eight or nine months after my first audition. And it was incredible. They treated us like kings and queens. Every actor should be treated that well on a job. It was amazing. David Cage is one of the most open, engaging, intelligent men I've ever met in my life. He started out as a composer and then he started creating video games. He just started having these dreams and visions of characters and concept and he stopped everything he was doing and bought a studio and hired like six of his best buddies and they started making video games and I'm so glad he did <laughs> and I hope they make more. <laughs> well, obviously, David Cage has sort of a portfolio of these sorts yes. of games mm -hmm. whereby you can influence what the character does what were your sort of thoughts on that? Because there's a development process in the production process. You'll be doing sort of a strand of events, but then yeah. other events will have to, you know, change certain other things. Yeah, mm. it's a very intense process, whereas in a film you do maybe three or four pages a day. In a video game, you do 30 or 40 pages a day. So you have to memorize by chunk and by strand, as you said. And it's a very challenging, labor-intensive physically 
Um, the second day I, I learned how to take care of my body through stretching and being more mindful of my energy. And when I wasn't working, really save my energy for the takes. There are like 82 cameras that you're working with. And I had never experienced anything like it before, but I, I love it. And, and I'm, I'm fascinated by the whole process. But it's very different from just getting a script and going to set and there's one camera. It's, a, it's an amazing labor-intensive, thought-intensive, physical process that is really rewarding and really fun. Oh, they kept stressing, make sure you know your line. Be off book, be off book, be off book. And um, you really have to. You can slow the whole production down. I think they worked on this for about four years. Mm. And then also there's a lot of dialogue changes. And as the as they develop the script, your character may change and your lines may change. So it's a, it's a really on your toes process. And uh, I think it's, it's really great. I think there are three different characters you can play in this particular game. So it's a very interesting process. I don't know how his mind works, but mm. he's thinking of all of that while he's working with you and it's a it's a pretty profound profound experience i mean i'd love to see a script because that must be at least 200 300 oh my pages God, yeah, yeah. Two hundred thousand pages yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well the other thing as well is obviously you're not a stranger to games because you did do voices for i think it was guild wars um, yes years ago incredible hulk yeah I've done voiceovers for games, but this was the first time my full image was used, and um, it's a very, very different process. Because obviously, it's it's all now mocap, as you mentioned with the, with mm-hmm. the cameras. Yeah, and, motion and capture. Yeah. Did you wear the suit with the balls? Yeah, <laughs> the little balls and the big balls. Both <laughs> balls are very important, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, no, but obviously you have to wear the suit of the balls. What What are your thoughts on sort of mocap technology and the uh, where the technology is now in terms of games? Because that's that's all sort of normal now. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's a very precise process. You have to warm up each time uh, you step onto the stage, the sound stage. You have to warm up in a very particular way. Your face, there's a, a certain facial gestures you do every time you step on the stage and body gestures. And then you try to forget about all that and just be as authentic as you can. But there aren't any um, real props. You're kind of pantomiming. We're in the boat, so there's a stick you're using for a paddle and a box you're using it as the boat in. Rose bushes aren't there. It, it's it's the best of of pantomime and acting and engaging all at the same time. And then you have wonderful actors there to work with. Brian Deckhart was really incredible, and we've become friends. But he kind of schooled me because he had been doing it for two years at the point that I met him, and it was my first time I was, you know getting my wings wet for the first time. But I I, I wonder where it will go next. I I think the cool thing about it is getting to do some really deep work. I mean, video games are are really profound in experience and connection. They're they're really dealing with uh, serious material. It's not just fantasy in some cases, I mean, where the world is heading as far as technology is and robots, uh, something like this possibly could happen. <laughs> so um, I, I, I think people are fascinated by uh, the computer aspect of it, but you also need the human aspect. You need the actor. I think a lot of games... They're trying to get rid of the actor. <laughs> Don't get rid of us. <laughs> I think it's a it's a wonderful merge of 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 um, computer element and human element combining to make beautiful art. Mm. I think. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 
Are there any sort of funny anecdotes you could share about the production of the game? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> okay, so my second day, I haven't gotten the game yet to play. I should be getting it soon. But on my second day, I was being really silly with Brian, and I was really comfortable, and we were getting through material, and, and I just started dancing and being silly. My first love was dance. I was a Katherine Dunham dancer I was trained in that technique and Dave was like you dance and I was like yeah <laughs> he was like oh, we should mocap you dancing and so I was like oh my god yeah <laughs> so they they filmed us I don't know if they used it but they filmed Brian and I improv dancing and said that they were going to use it at the end of the game and that was really fun to just be really silly like to see my character doing like hip hop <laughs> <laughs> with uh, the robot Connor was very, that was really, really, really fun. And we had a great time. And that was, that was my last day and one of the last moments that we had together before I flew back. It was also my first time in Paris, which was pretty amazing. I felt like I belonged there. I felt like I was at home. There's two things actually from that anecdote I can take. The first thing, <laughs> the first thing is I bet you they they've included it in the credits somewhere. <laughs> and and the second thing is because you mentioned Paris as well. I went to Paris a couple of weeks ago. Oh yeah. Yeah, the first time ever. Wow, where'd you go? What'd you see? I stayed away from the touristy stuff. That didn't impress me as much. It's just I just walked around for like four hours at a time. It, it just felt so wonderful just to walk and, mm. and to grab uh, some fresh fruit and dried currants and fresh currants and pan au chocolat and just to walk around. What did you do? I took a selfie with the Mona Lisa. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't make it to any museums. First of all, the jet lag kicked my butt for like two days. I was down for the count. Jet lag was serious. I didn't have any jet lag. It's just across the road, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for you it is. <laughs> what were you doing there? Oh, I just had a holiday. I don't get any oh, holidays. Nice. Yeah, I don't get any holidays doing this. I had two weeks off and I thought, right, I'll go to Paris. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Have you played any of the other David Cage games, Heavy Rain or... Yes. Yes, I liked Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain yeah. was very good. Fahrenheit was, I believe, another one of, of Dave's Dave's games. Um, yeah, I've played that. I haven't played this one, though. Okay. Mm. Okay, why not? What's your problem, Matt? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, yes, let's, let, let's go on to you, Simbi, you yourself. What made you want to get into acting in the first place? Uh, you know, dancing was my first love, and I used to go to an after-school program. And I found dancing such a cathartic, enlivening experience. I just, I loved it. And one day after my dance class, we were all leaving. And I was like, what are these people doing with these, these papers in their hands, these scenes? What is this? And they were like, it's an acting class. Just, you know, hang out. And, and that was it after that one class. I, I signed up to try an acting class and I, I found it to be such a healing experience. The arts to me is about healing and uh, about exploration and knowing oneself and creating and moving forward from a circumstance. I find it to just be a really cathartic, amazing way to get to know yourself and to get to know a group of people. I, I just always loved it. And I started teaching almost as soon as I started learning about it. One summer I taught down the street from my apartment building in Chicago at a rec center on the South side and I was teaching five to 14 year olds dance and I also taught in East LA and I also teach at Duke Ellington School of the Arts where I graduated and I just find it to be such a such an amazing way to 
to get to know yourself and to um, release all that you don't need. And it's fun. And it's fun. It's, it's really fun. It can be an intense endeavor as well. But um, I, I think the arts are, are a really profound way to spend your time. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it comes to that point in the interview, which I enjoy immensely when I get someone so talented, Simbi, on the show. Oh, thank you. Obviously, we spoke before the interview, and I've got to bring it up now, is the fact that you were on the show for, oh, I mean, it was what, five years, six years? Yes, yeah, six years, Third Rock from the Sun. Which, would you believe now, is, is going past the 20-year... Yes. <laughs> 20-year yes. mark. Obviously, such a fantastic show. If anyone's not seen it, I believe it's on Amazon Prime. Yeah, Amazon and uh, Netflix as well. Obviously, you've got John Lithgow, Kristen Johnson, French Stewart, and yeah. a little child that grew up to be Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, doing very well. Yeah, and obviously yourself played, I think you were a secretary or... A... Yeah. yeah, yeah, Nina. Nina. <laughs> My question is thus for you. There's been revivals of 90s shows uh, on Netflix and Amazon Prime. I can think of a couple in my head at the minute. Oh, uh, Will and Grace? Are you talking Will, about that? Will or... and Grace, yeah. Uh, Gilmore Girls was another one that's that's come mm-hmm. back. Obviously, it's a 20-year show. If uh, the creators of the show came to you now and said, look, we're thinking of doing a Third Rock from the Sun reboot or a, a new series... Would you be interested and would you think it would work? You know, it's so funny that you say that because I spoke with them a couple of months ago and they said people have approached them over the years and asked would they do a a revamp of the show and they feel that they said it all in the six years. I mean, I, I think with the turn of the tide and and the way the world keeps turning, there's always something to say about the human experience and, and living fully in that. But we dealt with so many things in those six years, but I think there's always more to say. You hear that Bonnie and Terry, (laughs) but they are happily retired. And I, I think they've had their share of being in the studio I would love to see what that would be like, and I would want to keep my dreadlocks and have Nina with dreadlocks and <laughs> and, and see how that would play out. But, yeah, I, I would totally be interested. Actually, I saw French Stewart a couple of months ago at a convention, and it was really nice hanging out with him and, and being in a totally different space. I was so young when I started that show, and... and it's so interesting now we're both parents and have uh, moved on and do different things now. And uh, it's, it's so interesting to watch, you know. I think my next move is um, I, I'm i writing a lot now. And I actually started when I was on Third Rock and I was very encouraged by the creators of the show as a writer and uh, a short script of mine just won the Harlem International Film Festival. So now I am in the process of putting everything in place to raise the money for it so I can have my um, directorial debut. So yeah, we we all move forward, but at the same time, I'm very interested and I would be very interested in going back and hanging out with everybody. Uh, we used to have the best lunches. Jane, Kurt, and I would just have a ball at lunch. So I would look forward to hanging out with my buddy again. Mm. I have to play a dangerous question here, Simbi. Yes, um, yes. I have to be, have to be a slightly a bit dangerous. Obviously, with stuff like, say, Doctor Who, you can replace the actors. Um, yes. You can obviously regenerate the, the, the character. Obviously, with Third Rock, it was the fact that they were sort of, were they pink aliens or something like that in in bodies? Yeah, they were, they were, yeah, from another planet inhabiting human bodies, yes. Would it work if certain characters or actors weren't there? 
I don't think it would. I think it has to be the full four. Yeah, no, I think so. Definitely has to be the former four, yeah. Yeah, because if you ch- yeah. change it, it doesn't really work. I mean, French, exactly. Stewart, French Stewart was fantastic at being sort of... Oh, my God, yeah. Dumb, <laughs> for, a better, yeah. for a better term, yeah. And obviously, Christian had that sort of commander level kind mm-hmm. of thing going. And I just can't see it working without John either. No, of course not. The high commander, no. <laughs> and they're not going to get William Shatner to play the big giant head again. <laughs> you never know. Money talks. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I suppose it does. And Wayne Knight, Wayne Knight as well, who... Yeah. Who... who <laughs> I seem to have only seen him in Jurassic Park. Uh, yes, he's done so much. Yeah. 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 Actually, he and Kristen were on a show together for a while. I can't think of the name of it right now. But yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I think, I, I think, yeah, we couldn't do it without the four. No. And that's if the four are interested as well. Yeah, yeah. You use the term with the times. Now... 20 years later how would comedy work with that show would it be a retro kind of thing because there'd be too many gags being aimed at certain presidents yeah yeah oh god yeah 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 i'm just yeah, thinking think so can you capture that 90s feel i didn't check out the the reruns of uh, Roseanne and Will and Grace, but I think certain things just work because of character and because of the dynamics of the interplay between other characters. The thing that worked so well about Third Rock is that they were like babies discovering the new. And I think if each of us allows ourselves to be new every day, we're all kind of aliens on this planet trying to figure it out and, and make sense of you know, ourselves, you know, right now I'm obsessed with Shameless. <laughs> and, oh my God, they, they they blow my mind with how they navigate through the world because of their characters. And I think Third Rock is, is that in a sense as well because it was because they were new to the planet that's what caused the conflict and how they process the world. Mm. I think a lot of the comedy came in that. Well, if they don't do a Netflix series, you can definitely bet they'll do some sort of 25th anniversary thing on Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, that'd be great. Mm. They'll get away with that, because they did it with yeah. Keenan and Kel, which <laughs> is again a 90s. Oh, yeah. yeah. I could easily see them doing something like that. Yeah, yeah, that would be clever. Yeah. Well, with regards to your acting career, are there any favourite actors that you've worked with? And why? Oh, wow. I think I kept a diary from around 12 to maybe 14 years old. And in my diary, I wrote about my obsessive love for Eddie Murphy. (laughs) And so when I got to work with him, I was much older, but all of that energy was still there. And I was like this blushing schoolgirl trying to stay calm in front of him. But I I just wanted to kiss him. (laughs) And that was one of the greatest moments of my life. I mean, I've worked with so many wonderful men. I mean, you know, John and and, um, Eddie Murphy, Mel Gibson. I worked with Wes Craven, who was phenomenal to work with randall wallace who wrote braveheart i i've worked with a lot of really incredible people that i i was just enamored of and uh it's been a a, amazing i i i've i've worked with a lot of cool cats and learned a lot and um Bernie Mac before he passed. Martin Lawrence was, that was my first job ever was on Martin. And he was so kind to me. And there were times after he got to know me a bit, I'd show up to the set and we'd be working on the scene. And he'd say, write me out, give all my lines to her and let her carry it. 
and he he let me work on my chops and help me polish my skills and and learn a lot i mean when i got to third rock I didn't know what a stand-in was because I was like, why is this woman asking me questions about my blocking? She's so nosy. But I mean, I, I was so green still. And working with Jane Curtin, just uh, comedy legends, watching them hit their mark and make mistakes and, and build upon the mistake until it was comedy gold. I mean, it's been really wonderful. I've gotten to work with a lot of great people and a lot of people whose names you wouldn't know, but watching their process and getting to connect with them on a set, that kind of connection is is really wonderful. So I, I'm grateful for the career that I've had thus far, and I'm curious to see what's still coming. Mm. Well, I'm going to give you a one-minute plug, okay? Uh, it's okay. It's to plug... <laughs> Uh, Detroit Air uh, Become Human, starting from now. Starting from now. Am I supposed to say something? <laughs> yeah, you've got a minute to plug Detroit Become Human. <laughs> Detroit Become Human dropped May 25th. Go grab your copy. Grab a copy for your dad. Father's Day is coming up. Yeah, I don't think my dad will play it, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, Simbi, it's been a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you so much for reaching out, Matt. I hope to talk to you again soon. As a final question for you, Simbi, you'll hate this question. Oh, boy. What was your favourite Third Rock from the Sun episode? Oh, man. Oh, it was... I remember it as the Super Bowl episode when Dick, John Lithgow's character, starts having dreams all of the aliens have dreams for the first time. Oh, and the supermodel episode with Cindy Crawford. Those are my favorite two. Yeah, the Super Bowl episode was a two-parter. And uh, all the aliens had really cool dreams. Randy Newman guest starred. Um, French had this great musical number that where he sang. It was just a really really cool process there was a lot of uh cgi and computer effects and that was really really fun that was fun that was my favorite episode i mean it is amazing when you think back about how many people were guest stars on the show it was oh my god yes um Mm. kathy bates oh god william shatner william shatner yeah uh (laughs) Alan Cummings. I mean, so many great, phenomenal, phenomenal people. Oh, I remember there was this model, Rashumba. She taught me how to eat caviar properly <laughs> when she guest starred. Yeah, we had a lot of, lot of great, great, great guest stars. Mm. Ed Bagley Jr. Yeah, it was great. I think I think my favorite one, which I can share with you, Cindy, is that one with George Takei. Oh my! Yes. Yeah. <laughs> when they accuse him of stealing the um, stealing the hotel towels. Yes, he was <laughs> hilarious. I met some of the coolest people on Third Rock. Definitely. Bring it back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's start a, um, a fan page. Bring it back. Yeah. Yeah, and if anybody wants to um, follow what's happening. With my crowdfunding on Instagram, I am at KaliAlchemy.com, K-A-L-I-A-L-K-E-M-I. Well, thanks very much for your time, Simbi. It's been an absolute pleasure to interview you. Oh, thanks, Matt. Have a wonderful day. Okay, thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.